So, in this video I'm going to talk about partial R-squares, um, but first I'm going to provide a little bit of background. Uh, in the previous video I talked about part R-squares, and kind of the setup and general background is the same uh, in this setting, so I'm just going to add a little bit um, in right now. So if we start with correlation matrices, Here I'm describing the correlation between uh, oops, between three variables. Uh, I'm calling them x1, x2, and x3. The correlation between any variable in itself is going to be 1. Uh, and then the off-diagonals I'll denote with r21, which represents the correlation between variables x2 and x1. Here I'll say r31 r3, 2, r1, 2, r2, 3, oops, r1, 3, and r2, 3. And so this is a correlation matrix. These values are the pairwise correlations between um, the variable along the row and the variable along the column. So what these represent are, it, it's a pairwise summary of the strength and direction of the linear relationship between um, a row variable and a column variable in this matrix. And if we take these values and square them, then we end up with, uh, I'll call it an R-squared matrix. And here, again along the diagonals, is all ones. And then the off-diagonals would be the R-squares between the variables. So this is the R-square between uh, x2 and x1, between x3 and x1, between x3 and x2, between x1 and x2, between x1 and x3, and between x2 uh, and x3. And so the values in this table would represent the pairwise um, proportion of variation accounted for in one of these variables by the other. And so these tables make up a great summary of kind of the univariate um, relationships between these variables. But when we get into more complicated models, uh, two additional kinds of correlation uh, become relevant. And those are the part correlation, which I talked about in the last video, and the partial correlations and partial R-squares, which, which I'm going to talk about in this video. So here we're considering a model uh, for example, we're estimating xi using um, an estimate of an intercept along with the estimate of a uh, slope on one variable, xj, and the estimate of another slope on an additional variable, xk. And one question that we might be interested in is uh, what proportion of the variation in x i that remains that remains Um, after removing the proportion um, accounted for by XJ, I can be accounted for by xk. So the setting is I have first the model, um, or I have this multiple regression model where I'm using xk and xj to estimate xi 
Uh, and what I'm interested in is the portion of variation that xi, um, or sorry, what I'm interested in is I take all of the variation in xi, I remove the proportion of that uh, that can be accounted for by xj by itself, and then I look at, of the remaining variation, um, how much of that, what proportion of that can be explained by uh, xk. So we can also think of this in terms of Venn diagrams. So I'm going to draw one circle that represents xi. So this would be all of the variation in xi. Um, some of that, hmm, some of that will overlap with xj. So this will be the proportion of variation between xi and xj. The proportion of variation in xi that's explained by xj. And some of that can also overlap uh, with a third variable, xk. So what we're particularly interested in here is um, first we start with all the variation in xi and then we remove the variation between xi and xj and we want to know of this variation that remains how much of it can be explained by xk. And that will be a proportional uh, r-square. So I'm going to denote this as um, it'll be the proportion of variation in xi that's um, explained by xk after removing all of the variation um, accounted for by xj. So it's going to be a ratio between two things. And we start out with something similar to uh, what we had in the previous video on part correlations where first we look at uh, the variation in xi that can be explained by um, both xj and xk together. And then we remove from that the proportion of variation that's shared between xi and xj, or the proportion of variation in xi that's explained by xj. Oops. And if I stop there, then we have a part correlation. Uh, the way that partials differ from parts is that we're not really interested in this um, proportion of variation overall. What we want to do is take, is look at um, out of all the variation in xi, we want to remove that variation in xi that is explained by xj, which would be this area here. So what we're left with is, oops, out of this area, we're looking at the proportion of it um, that's covered by xk. So it's the proportion of variation in xi that remains after removing uh, that proportion accounted for by xj that can be explained by xk. Um, in terms of uh, correlations, this can be expressed as uh, the variation shared between i and k minus the variation shared between, sorry, the correlation between i and k minus the product of the correlation between variables i and j and between variables uh, k and j over 1 minus the proportion of variation uh, in 
I explained by j times 1 minus the proportion of variation in uh, k explained by j. Square root of the denominator and square the whole thing to get it in terms of um, proportions of variation. Similarly, the partial correlation which I'll represent with um, the correlation between i and k uh, when we remove the effects of j from each variable uh, can be expressed as the square root of the proportion of variation in i uh, explained by j and k together uh, and then removing the proportion of variation in i that's explained by j. Looking at that relative to um, what remains after removing the proportion of variation explained by j. And in terms of correlations, this would just be the correlation between i and k less the product of the correlations between i and j and k and j over the square root of the product of the proportion of variation um, that doesn't overlap between i and j times the proportion of variation that doesn't overlap between k and j. So, in summary, uh, in this video we figured out the proportion of variation that one variable um, can account for out of the variation that remains when we remove the effects of a third variable. Uh, there's another way to think about this in terms of correlations between the residuals of models, um, and I'll explain that in another video.